Welcome to another episode of Smeg Chris Review. As you may have guessed, my name is Chris. It could have been Smeg, but I haven't changed it to that. Yet. Anyway, it's time for me to review the latest film that I saw, Thor Ragnarok. Let's start with the downside. Only a few characters from the first and second movies return, however most of them are in blink and you'll miss them scenes. And are easily dispatched. Then there are those that don't return at all. Only Jane got a mention, the rest seem to have gone to Marvel limbo. You know, like Mutant X did. Then there was the whole scene with Loki. If you haven't seen the second one, I'm afraid I'm about to spoil it for you. So you may want to close your ears, like this. Or use cushions to cover them, like this. What am I doing? Anyway, the spoiler is, Loki managed to trick Odin and Thor into believing that he was dead. He managed to get rid of Odin and took his place as his father. I think that made sense. However, back to the third one, what I see as a downside is that they managed to rectify that whole plot point very quickly at the beginning. I'm guessing they had to rectify the storyline because of some actors weren't returning, so they had to resolve it pretty quickly. That's my guess anyway. Oh, and as we saw in the trailer, Thor's hammer is lost. I actually hated that. What is Thor without his hammer? My other disgruntlement isn't that bad to be honest. I thought the music by Mark Mothersburg was a little cheesy. But it did fit in with the movie as they seemed to be trying to go with an 80s feel. Don't ask me why, they just did. And for some reason, it worked. But still it annoyed me because of the cheesiness. One last bad thing. It isn't the best Marvel film of the year because it was up against Guardians of the Galaxy 2 and Spider-Man Homecoming. Blame them for that bad point. But it doesn't mean it's bad. Let me get on to the good points. Out of the three Thor movies, this is by far the best. The story was easy to follow and the action came when necessary. Idris Elba got a lot more to do, which is always a bonus. Loki had a lot more scenes than he did in the last movie, which is always great. I think he's the most loved bad guy since the Joker. There were some wonderful new characters thrown in too. One such character was Jeff Goldblum playing the Grandmaster where he basically played himself. Again. Oh, and then there was the worst kept secret in Hollywood. The Hulk was in it too. All his scenes were awesome. The battle between Thor and Hulk was pretty cool. But it was Kate Blanchett playing Hela who stole the whole film for me. Her villainness was sublime. Yes, I used a different word for once. Of course this movie has comedy, lots of it. And it is hilarious. And as you may guess, there are two post end credit scenes. The first seems to be leading up to the next Avengers movie. I'm not really sure about that. The second scene wasn't worth hanging around for. In fact, I heard a lot of the audience moaning, We hung around for that. That's what some of them sounded like. So my advice, stick around for the first one. The second, don't. Thanks to a lot of imagination, comedy and action, I give Thor Ragnarok a... I'm still pretty peeved about that hammer though. Well, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and subscribing if you have. Until the next time, peace out. Hmm, I wonder if this actually does work. Hold on. Hmm, I can't hear my neighbour singing anymore. So as you can see, I'm wearing my only Marvel shirt that I have. And the only downside to it is, there's no Thor on it. We've got Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America. But it's got Hulk on it. I was wearing this when I went to see the film and it never occurred to me that Thor wasn't actually on it at all. Shows how much attention I pay to things. But here it's still a Marvel shirt so it works. Actually it works in another way too because there's no Thor's hammer here. <sighs> they need to bring that hammer bike. I still don't know what I'm doing.